with Christmas. Now, we're just 10 days away. I can't even believe it. Uh, 10 days away, CNBC taking a look at how, how some of the hottest holiday items get from the factory floor to retailers near you. And this year, with supply chains finally normalizing and inflation and seemingly cooling, the costs are going to be lower. Eunice Yoon, Jane Wells, Pippa Stevens, and Courtney Reagan take us on a journey of a care bear. It all starts at a manufacturing site in China. While the U.S. fights inflation, China struggles with deflation, and that's translating to lower pricing at the factories. During the global supply chain disruptions two years ago, the cost of making a Care Bear was up 25 percent. Today, it's back to where it was before the pandemic. Slower growth here has reined in material prices, as well as workers' wages. And with U.S. orders harder to come by, factories compete with cut prices. Logistics costs are also in check. No more tight COVID controls and shipping containers are plentiful at the Chinese ports. So products that have been held up for months on the factory floor in 2021 are now shipped out to America almost immediately. Nowhere is the difference in the supply chain more visible than here at the ports of L.A. and Long Beach. When I was here two years ago, there were 65 ships anchored offshore waiting 10 days for an appointment. Now... I don't see anything and ships are going right in. The U.N. says global trade is down 5 percent and shipping container costs are down almost 90 percent. 50 percent of the truck gates go unused every day and that means we have capacity. In November, container volume was up 19 percent, but overall for the year it's still down. That's partly because labor tensions sent some ships away from the West Coast. It's a similar story with trucks and trains. Two years ago, there weren't enough as consumers loaded up. But today, there's too much supply and not enough demand. Volumes are down and spot rates have dropped 40 percent since 2021. With all this available freight, it's now cheaper to ship this Care Bear from the port to the warehouse and on to the final destination. But whether or not all these savings are passed along to consumers can depend on the retailer. The journey for this Care Bear from a factory in China to a toy store like this Toys R Us on the East Coast is back to normal, now taking about a month. Two years ago, it was twice as long. And transportation costs were making up almost a quarter of the bear's total cost. It's now down to 5 percent. We're just seeing um, less pressure on the manufacturing cost than the transportation cost, a little bit more pressure on other areas of uh, the supply chain and also our customers are looking for more value. So we're being squeezed a little bit. Toymaker Basic Fund was adding a transportation fee to retail invoices two years ago. Now those are gone. If you look at toy deflation, seasonal discounting and consumers desire for lower priced toys, you're going to find this bear retails for about $15 in most stores. That's down from $17 to $20 two years ago. And the owner of this factory told me that he passes on on almost all of the cost savings that he gets here in China to his American buyers. And that is significant for him because, Andrew, he makes one million Care Bears in this factory every single month. Uh, Eunice Yun is live in China uh, right now with us. Let me ask you this. <laughs> um, we talked about all the costs that have come down. One of the costs, and, and you, there was a mention that you made about wages. Now, you know, here in the United States, wages, wa mm. wage growth has gone up m materially. And people thought that that was going to be a sticky situation, the wage situation. Is it not that way in China? It's not that way in China. I mean, wages have been going up every single year. He said that uh, the factory owner said that even for him, um, despite the economic situation, wages are marginally going up. But here it's much more marginal because of the unemployment problem. So that's helping to restrain some of the wage growth. And then when you think of what the future holds here in terms of resilience, in terms of folks actually building out manufacturing facilities elsewhere, how much pressure, I mean, people, people often thought that that was actually going to put more pressure, that was going to be inflationary, but it often, see, it seems maybe in this case it's not. Well, I think it depends on which industry that you're in. Uh, the factory owner here said that for himself, uh, where he's looking is to build up in China. So there's definitely some diversifying going on. Uh, but there are other industries that are looking towards um, other countries to try to diversify outside of China. So he is seeing uh, those trends. But for him specifically, he's casting an eye to the domestic market. Right. Eunice Yoon, um, I should thank you and I should thank uh, all of our reporters 
who brought us on uh, a remarkable journey. It's very, uh, very infrequent. You get to actually see the full sort of uh, supply chain spectrum from the beginning to the end, and you guys did it now and have done it for a couple of years, and it's really uh, uh, an education. So thank you. Appreciate it. That was pretty cool. It is Courtney, pretty cool. Courtney, Jane, it all the way across. Cool. Yeah. I like it.